Assalamu alaikum and greetings. In this video, we are going to take a look at optical isomerism in alkene compound. In the previous video, we have talked about the structural isomerism. To recap, structural isomerism can be divided into position isomerism, chain isomerism, and functional group isomerism. The concept of structural isomerism is it will have the same molecular formula but different bonding sequences. Compared to optical isomerism, optical isomerism will have same molecular formula and same bonding sequences. However, differs in spatial enrichment. In previous video, we already discussed about the bonding sequences. Now, what about spatial arrangement? Let's see the compound having four carbon in it. The carbon for the first option can be bonded as follows C1, attached to C2, attached to C3, and attached to C4. As you can see here, the C4 is positioned at the upper level compared to the C3. In another option, it can also be drawn as C1 attached to C2 attached to C3 and then the C4 is located at the lower part of the C3. So as you can see here, it remains the bonding sequence whereby number 1 will be connected to carbon number 2 connected to carbon number 3 and finally carbon number 4. Same goes with the second option. Carbon number 1 will be connected to carbon number 2 followed by carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. For this both example, the sequences is the same. However, carbon number 4, which is the terminal carbon, one will be located at the upper part of the chain, while for the next example, it is located at the bottom part of the chain. So, this is what the spatial arrangement means. Optical isomer is part of the isomer type of Stereo isomerism. The stereo is referring to the space. Here is the example from our previous video. As you can see here, there are four isomers for C4H9Cl. Let's say we name it as A, B, C, and D. Not only all these four compounds exhibit structural isomerism, one of them also exhibit optical isomerism. So let's take a look which one does possess the optical isomerism for this compound. Let's take a look compound A and also compound B. In order to determine whether a compound having optical isomer or not, it need to fulfill the following characteristics. First, it must be a chiral carbon. Secondly, it has a non superimposable mirror image. So let's take a look on how we identify this characteristic in the two compounds. The two compounds that we're going to compare is one chlorobutene and the other one is two chlorobutene. Let's take a look on how we can identify the chiral carbon. So what is chiral? Chiral carbon is referring to carbon which attached to four different atoms or molecules. If you want to take a look at one chlorobutene, there are four possible carbon that can be considered as chiral. Let's say we are referring to the first carbon as the center carbon. So the first carbon, it will attach to Cl followed by two hydrogen which attach to it and finally it attach to CH2, CH2 and also CH3 which is carbon number 2, carbon number 3 and also carbon number 4. In this case, carbon number 1 cannot be considered as chiral because it has two hydrogen which is the same atom attached to it. Remember, in order to become chiral, 
it need to attach to four different atoms or molecules. What about the second carbon? If carbon number two is the center, it will attach to two hydrogen as CH2. For this part, it attached to CH2Cl and for this part, it attached to CH2C3. Again, as we can see here, carbon number 2 cannot become the chiral carbon because there is the same atom which is hydrogen attached to it. You can try this on carbon number 3 and carbon number 4. Please explain in a group why carbon number 3 and carbon number 4 cannot be considered as the chiral center. Moving on to the next structure, here we have two chlorobutane. Again, for this structure, there are four possible carbon that can become a chiral center. Let's jump to carbon number two. If carbon number two becoming the center, it will attach to Cl. On the left side, it attached to CH3 from carbon number one. And on the right side, it attached to CH2 which is carbon number 3 and CH3 from carbon number 4. The last attachment is towards the hydrogen atom. As you can see here, the center carbon attached to four different atoms or molecules. Therefore, this structure can be considered as chiral. Try to check for carbon number 1, 3 and 4 for this structure. Can you determine whether they are chiral or not? Now we already comply with the first characteristic which is having a chiral center. What about the non super impossible mirror image? First we need to draw back the chiral center that we have come up with. So it is covered, attached to chlorine, attached to CH3 attached to CH2CH3 and finally attached to hydrogen. To draw the mirror image, we need to imagine that there is a mirror facing to the structure. Let's draw a line to indicate that it is a mirror. Now we're going to draw the reflection. First we have the carbon and then on top of it, we're going to have a chlorine. Next, there is a CH2CH3 will be bonded at the side and the CH3 will be reflexed on the other side. And finally, don't forget the hydrogen. Next, if we try to take the image and then we try to superimpose it on the original object, we can see that the position of CH2 and CH3 has changed. This is what we call as the non-superimposable image. The sequence of bonding still remains the same. However, the space or the orientation of the atom or molecules is differs from one another. There is a special name for these two optical isomers. They will be called as enantiomers. That's all for this video. Try to determine whether compound C and D having an optical isomer. If you have any question, please leave a comment below or discuss it in the telegram group. See you guys in next video. Goodbye.